Now, Douglas, I want to ask you about Scotland. Uh, what is happening in Scotland? They've passed a new hate crime bill that will create new offences of stirring up hatred against protected groups with even conversations that take place in the privacy of homes around the dinner table now under the law. So a person could be charged with a hate crime for something they say during a dinner party. Uh, something to look forward to, Douglas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Book your tickets to Scotland now, Rita. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary thing, not least to happen in uh, the country that of all the Enlightenments gave us what I regard as being the greatest of the Enlightenments. Uh, Scotland produced some of the finest philosophers uh, of the 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, they gave us free markets, free thought and much more. Uh, to see uh, Scotland, uh, my own Scotland, reduced uh, to this is is really pitiful. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot to be said for it. But one, one thing, of course, Rita, is um, people try out ideas around the dinner table. People uh, make jokes around dinner tables and people have a laugh around dinner tables. They, and, and as I say, they, they form ideas. They try things out. That may be different from uh, speaking on air or, or, or speaking to a rally. Uh, it is different. Now, uh, whether or not anything on air or to a rally at an event should be policed is, is quite a separate question. I don't, I don't think it particularly should. Um, but around a dinner table, um, uh, the amazing thing about this, Rita, is that all, all, the, all the people who would do this, you know, we have to ask that same question that my late great friend Christopher Hitchens beautifully put in Toronto in 2006, when the Canadian government was pushing through speech laws that would police the speech of Canadians, which is essentially the question is, who would you nominate to be the person in your society so right, so correct, so just, and so good that they could decide what you or I or anyone else is allowed to think and read, and on this occasion, say around our own dinner table. Who's your nominee? Do you have anyone? I don't have anyone, Rita. I could never come up with such a person. There are brilliant people. There are kind people. There are well-read people. But who would be the person who you would nominate to decide what could be said at any dinner table and all dinner tables in the land? And the answer is, there is no such person. We tried this sort of thing in Europe in the past. We tried having inquisitions. We tried having a clerical class who decided for the better of the public what the public could know, read and say. It didn't work out. And the Scottish Enlightenment, among other things, freed the people of Scotland and the world from those kinds of superstitions. And yet here we are, it seems, back again. And so it'll only be stopped if enough people say, no, no, this isn't Scotland and this isn't freedom. Now, before I get to Kate Gate, and sadly, I do have to ask you about Kate Gate, uh, let's have a look at the rise of the right across Europe. We've talked previously about the rise of right-wing parties and leaders from uh, Sweden to Hungary to the Netherlands and now Portugal. Uh, the, with the right there, or the far right, if you prefer, has come roaring back at Sunday's election. The far right is once again set to play a major role in the country's political future. That's the headline. Uh, the national elections were won by the centre-right Democratic Alliance Coalition, Douglas, but it is the performance of the anti-immigration conservative Cheka party that is alarming the establishment. You look at their rise, it's quite astonishing. They're now Portugal's third largest political force. They were only getting 1.3% of, uh, of the vote back in 2019. Now they're up around 20%. Yes, I mean, I, I think this is a familiar pattern, uh, which you and I have looked at before. I mean, it, it's a familiar pattern, isn't it? If 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 you don't address the issues that are 
very close to people's hearts, very close to their wallets, their pockets, their their neighborhoods. If if you don't address them, somebody will. And uh, some of the parties that come along to do this are more or less par- palatable to me or to you, to, to to many other people. But they will come along, um, of course. And uh, this is just the latest example. Portugal, actually, it's very interesting. I haven't been there for a few years. But when I was last there, I noted that although uh, 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 Portugal um, gets quite a lot of people coming through it through illegal migration routes, um, a lot a lot more leave to go north uh, than in certain other countries in Europe. Britain, for instance, people tend to stay. Um, so it has its own challenges, but even those challenges it faces, which are less than some of the northern European countries and are far less than, for instance, America at the moment, um, uh, they themselves are revolting against this system. And mm-hmm. I would just, as always, beg the political class to listen to that and to take it seriously and not to denounce it and not to dismiss every critic and every voter as far right uh, because they have a concern which, frankly, uh, um, frankly, 10, 20, or 20 years ago was a concern that left-wing politicians uttered uh, at the, before the ballot, you know, which centrist politicians uttered at the ballot, which Barack Obama said and Bill Clinton said in America. Uh, people have pathologized what used to be perfectly mainstream views and tried to make them all far right in recent years. And it's to the enormous detriment, actually, of the centrist parties. You've been warning about this for many years yourself, personally, The Strange Death of Europe. People who've read that fantastic book would would know about these trends well. Now, I hesitate to ask you about this rather frivolous story. Only one could argue it's not as frivolous <laughs> as it first seems. What is your take on the Kate Gate fake photo scandal? There's caused an almighty media storm. We've even got academic I... journals here in Australia writing about it. Uh, every mainstream media outlet is crazy about it. Uh, firstly, do you believe that Kate is responsible for those 16 editing errors that were identified, at least 16? Uh, what do you make of this bizarre story? I I can't understand it at all, Rita. I have to admit, I can't understand it at all. Maybe you can explain it to me. I, I just don't get it. Um, uh, uh, first of all, the analysis of the photo, the minute, minute it came out, I, I couldn't understand. It just seemed mm. to me to be a happy family photo. Um, but then uh, uh, what is this photo editing thing, Rita? I've got to ask you. Um, uh, uh, what, 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 what are the know. changes? What are the changes? Because, I mean, if... If the allegation is, I don't know, that Kate looks totally different and she's edited herself, I suppose that makes sense. But they they seem to be saying that all the photo is edited in different ways and people's legs are crossed in ways they wouldn't. I don't know. I don't quite know what people are trying to imply. And I wish they'd come out with it. Um, uh, uh, You know, it's baffling to me. The one thing I would say is that that, that it, it is probably a good example of why people in the public eye, particularly very prominently in the public eye like royals, should be very careful about um, acceding to demands to sort of show themselves. Uh, uh, You know, if uh, uh, the Princess of Wales is ill, she she clearly has been ill for some time, if this is the case, then it's probably best just to say, you know, that that remains the case and, and, and not to release photos that have been then have to be re re- or uh, returned because they're, they're, they've been edited in some way. Um, I, th- I think that it's very important, and the royals actually have learned this lesson in the past, it's actually very important not to uh, accede to too much public pressure uh, when there are private matters at stake. And uh, if I was giving them advice, I would say, first of all, um, uh, just, just try to bear in mind that you know you need to recover in your own time. Don't, don't release photos and, and don't unleash this blizzard of speculation online, because uh, I, I've seen people go into sort of all sorts of mad corners, Rita, as I'm sure you have. And I think the explanation will simply be uh, uh, that a, a, a very, um, a very nice and and a young woman who's been serving her country uh, is uh, recovering, and that's it. 
and uh, all the people who want to find evidence that the moon landing didn't happen from this photo, they're going to be disappointed. Well, I've got to say, you and I are both naive because yeah, when I first saw the photo, there was uh, no suspicions uh, of, of uh, wrongdoing or it could be fake or manipulated or any question marks. I was just like, oh, it's another nice photo of Kate and the kids. Yes. But uh, here we are. Right. Now, Douglas Murray, I see you're in South Africa. I'll have to ask you about that next week because South Africa and what's happening there, it, it is fascinating, it's disturbing. Um, but thank you so much for your time this evening. It's a great pleasure to be back with you. See you soon.